the Internet of Things. It is supposed to be a big step toward a better world, an easier world, a more fulfilling world, a world where, say, my fridge buys groceries for me so I can focus on better things in life, like sitting on a couch and drinking beer. But improving human lives is a complicated problem. Can the Internet of Things help? As we all know, for every complicated problem, there is a solution that is short, simple, and wrong. And the Internet of Things might as well just be such a wrong solution. We may create a fish while expecting it to climb a tree. And why am I saying so? Let's see what the Internet of Things is. In a nutshell, it is interconnected, smart things. Everything is smart and interconnected, network connected. And when we say everything is everything we can think of, people data, processes, things. Things like door locks, light switches, appliances of every type, our cars, our bodies, and so on. And we should add the industrial Internet of Things with its smart agriculture, smart cities, smart factories, smart homes, smart grids, intelligent transportation. So everything is smart. But smart is not enough, whatever it means. We'll talk about this in a minute. It also requires tons of other idealistic assumptions, like ubiquitous networks, uninterrupted connectivity, effectively free processing, massive bandwidth, unlimited electrical power, unending data storage. Does it sound realistic to you? But let's start with, should it be done at all? And start with a few social questions. How about privacy, freedom of choice, social control, political manipulation. The first one would be, whose lifestyles will it serve at the end? Say, as I've already said, my dream lifestyle is sitting on the couch and drinking beer. And I enjoy it, it works great for me. <laughs> and my fridge is really smart. It keeps itself stocked for me with my favorite brand, and life is great. But my health monitor is also smart and connected. So it starts complaining. It says, your heart is trash, your glucose and cholesterol levels are off the charts, and you weigh a ton. <laughs> and it tells my fridge to change its shopping habits. And rats me out to my physician. And notifies my health insurance. And now I don't have a lifestyle. I'm healthy and miserable. <laughs> <laughs> the question is, who's in control? Where is my freedom of choice? Well, you might say, it was for my own good. And should I say, thank you, big brother? So now about privacy. Obviously, it will be totally lost as you know it. Everything is on display. And again, it might be a good thing, right? No confessions needed, ever. But potential for social control and political manipulation is totally horrifying. The Internet of Things would be probably the greatest propaganda machine we have ever seen. And again, who's going to control it? So should it be done? Let's assume for a minute that it should and move on. Ask ourselves, can it be done? 
What are the technical questions? Let's start with the main theme, smart. So we have tons of various devices and processes that are network connected, and each of them is smart in their own way. Each playing their own cello, so to speak. Do we need a conductor to turn it into a symphony? To have some kind of centralized or distributed brain to make the whole network smart and coordinated? Surely we do. Now the question is, how smart can it really be? Will it be human smart? Robot smart? Somehow otherwise smart? And again, who decides? Who decides which way is smarter? Is it smart enough? And for whom? Let's say it's human smart. Then will it be prone to human fallacies and cognitive biases and dissonances? Just like humans, would it be perceptive, susceptible to mental noise? Will it stereotype, profile, gamble? Will it be heuristic in the sense that it takes information processing shortcuts? Now, if it's robot smart, how will it handle ambiguities, trade-offs, logical versus emotional decisions? How will it mimic intuition? If it's smart at all, how will it solve problems, paradoxes, moral dilemmas? Will it be smart in making discoveries or just bluntly, stupidly ignore them? And again, who decides? Who controls it? So you can, as you can see, creating such a brain for the Internet of Things will be a daunting task. And in a way, we'll be trying to create something which is better and smarter than ourselves. And it might never happen. No matter how much time and money we dump into it, it may forever remain a fantasy. And the worst of all, it's not all. We also need other idealistic components. Free, ubiquitous, unlimited, unending, massive, uninterrupted. Well, first of all, they're all relative. Say, a penny is nothing, but how about a billion pennies? That, that's 10 million bucks. So is it free? Well, it depends, right? Same with all other assumptions. They're relative. But worst of all, whatever we might have, we'll use it all up and run into limitations. Because that's what we do. Because that's who we are, and it happens all the time. And then it will become instead expensive, sparse, sporadic, insufficient, restricted, limited. Well, is it all? No. There is a real technical problem, noise. Noise, like radio noise, like interference from countless other gizmos, and informational noise, like competing and conflicting data. Here is a little glimpse at the future. Have you ever been in a crowded, crowded stadium like this? Have you tried to make a call? It's a simple call, you're fine. There are people around you screaming, so you might speak up or shout in the microphone, but the call itself will connect probably fine, especially if they built up the infrastructure around. But now, what about that great picture you've just taken? Or browsing the web to check the scores from other games? You will run into limitations or delays. Why? That's because of the radio frequency interference from the other cell phones other people are carrying, even if they are not using them. So, as far as the electronic noise, in the Internet of Things, any place you find yourself in will be just like this, or a thousand times like this. There will be so much interference from other count, countless other gizmos that the nature of interference will fundamentally change and we won't be able to handle it by the tools available in the past. We'll need to develop a completely new paradigm of dealing with noise 
how to analyze it, how to treat it, how to mitigate it. And here is a simple analogy. Just use an umbrella to shield from rain. You'll be safe and dry. And in electronics, it's commonly done by filtering and shielding. And it works for most of the time. Now, a tsunami. Same water, just move it. But using more umbrellas will not work. In the Internet of Things, we are planning to add countless, very complex radio control chips to all the devices around us, to countless number of the devices. That will fundamentally change the nature of inter-device interference. Raindrops will become a tsunami, and we won't be able to handle it unless we come up with a solution. Can we come with a solution? I don't know. As Albert Einstein once said, we cannot solve our problems with the same level of thinking that created them. No matter how many umbrellas we use, it, they won't protect us from a tsunami. We need to figure out new ways. But, well, maybe we can build a giant umbrella or a tsunami wall, <clears throat> but let's see what we can do. Maybe we should try to prevent the tsunami from happening to begin with. The opposite of a problem might as well be a right solution. So let's take sensors, for example. There are ways too many of them. And the more information they transmit, the more noise they generate, both electronic radio noise and informational noise. So we need to strive to make each smart sensor a man of few words, transmitting only concise, very simple and very relevant information about the device and process. Then maybe we can reduce the interference from all this countless gizmos, just maybe. Same, which, and that may, may be even more important, is the power, the electrical power, the grid. The Internet of Things will require enormous amount of electricity, which will somehow need to be generated, converted, transferred into and around. And the batteries for all these countless sensors will need to be charged. So we need charges, and generators, converters, and charges are very noisy devices. And now they are part of the Internet of Things. They are part of the network. So we'll be, they will be screaming loudly into the network at totally ex exacerbating the noise tsunami. We need to find the ways to make the generation and converter very quiet, very relaxed, and then, just then, we might not have such a big tsunami, and we might just turn it into a rainstorm and use a bunch of umbrellas and be fine. Again, it's all speculative because we haven't developed a new paradigm yet. And the noise problem, electronic noise problem of the Internet of Things is a very real one, and it's gaining wider recognition among scientists and engineers. Here is an example from a few months ago article in the IEEE Spectrum, and it's called Radio Frequency Interference Threatens to Hobble the Internet of Things. Tellingly, its informal title is Phone to Fridge, Shut Up. So, as you can see, there are a lot of challenges and questions about the Internet of Things. And Social question is one thing, should it be done? Because if we can do something, it doesn't necessarily mean that we should do this. But there are also technical questions as far as is it feasible at all. <coughs> as uh, Richard Feynman once said, for a successful technology, reality must take precedence over public relations, for nature cannot be fooled. So we need to temper the hype around the Internet of Things, focus on the reality, solve the technical problems wisely. Well, 
one by one, and measure our expectations wisely. We need to pay attention to the social aspects and, above all, respect everybody's lifestyle. If I'm to guess, the industrial Internet of Things will probably materialize to some degree first. Why? First of all, the social issues won't be that prevalent. They would be still important for, say, smart cities, but the impact won't be that dramatic. There will be fewer concerns about privacy and individual freedom. There are much less room for political manipulation. After all, the industries are supposed to produce a tangible outcome, not a political hot air. Well, to a degree, but it should be easier to handle. Also, robot-like brain, which we can create, should work just fine for industries, because most of them are and should be governed by an algorithm. And uh, the noise problems would be easier to handle. There will be fewer sensors overall than in ubiquitous uh, human network. And also industrial environments are normally more structured, organized, and standardized, so we might be able to handle those problems. <coughs> but whether or not the whole Internet of Things will materialize, we still need to attempt to travel this road, because the journey here would be more important than the destination. Just like in the space exploration, it's not the goal, final goal, to say, reach and land on the moon that is important, that the technologies we develop while trying to achieve those goals. Like all these great rockets which launch satellites and carry bombs around. So we definitely should travel this road. Good things might happen along the way and horrible things. We'll find out in time. Thank you. <laughs>